What's up, Fichero fam? So with me being a DJ music producer and a YouTuber and somebody who's well-connected in Vegas, it's been interesting to see kind of the inner workings of the Vegas nightclubs. And as you can imagine, especially with the big, you know, legendary nightclubs that exist in Vegas, there are a lot of interesting secrets that I've learned in terms of just my experience, you know, being a DJ and being well-connected and kind of seeing how things really work on the inside. So in this video, I want to talk about five Vegas nightclub secrets that you probably don't know. Number one, packed versus ratio. Now, as you can imagine, when it comes to nightclubs in general, not just Vegas nightclubs, but anywhere, they also want more girls than guys, right? They want kind of that golden ratio of there's always being a ton of girls and not that many guys. However, when it comes to Vegas nightclubs, there are two different categories of clubs, actually. Now, one category of clubs, even though, yeah, they might prefer more girls than guys, they actually say, look, we'd much rather be a packed house of maybe 75% guys and 25% girls than to be basically a very smaller house with more girls than guys, right? So for a place like Omnia and Hakkasan, it is a lot easier to get into and a lot easier to be guest listed simply because they don't care as much about having that perfect ratio. They're like, look, we just want a packed full house. We just want it to be crazy. Other clubs, on the other hand, places like Excess are actually the opposite. They'd much rather be maybe 50% packed, but it'd be more girls and guys than have it be fully packed and have it be more guys. So as you can imagine, when it comes to getting into these nightclubs, that is something to consider. And this is why typically it's a lot easier, especially as a guy or especially if you have a bad ratio in your group, to get into places like ha uh, Hakkasan and Omnia because they just want to be packed. They just want to have as many people as possible as opposed to places like Excess or Intrigue or other places where they're like, look, we definitely want a really good ratio. Number two, locals are favored. Now, this is something that's been changing a lot over time and getting more and more apparent that a lot of nightclubs, a lot of venues, especially on the Strip, are kind of experimenting and utilizing this tool to say, hey, you know, we understand that if you live in Vegas or you're a Nevada resident, you probably don't want to go to the Strip. Probably not mind-blowing to anybody that most people who live in Vegas don't really go on the ship too much unless they have to work there, unless they have to be there for some specific reason. However, though, there are a lot of places now that say, look, if you have a Nevada ID, you specifically need a Nevada state ID, we'll actually get you in for free. We'll give you a free drink. We'll have you have express entry or all the above, right? There's a lot of places that are starting to do that because as you can imagine, if let's say clubs start favoring the locals, that might bring them more money. That might bring them more revenue because the locals always avoid the strip at all costs, right? They, they always go to either like Old Vegas or the Fremont Street Experience or basically other places around that, but don't really touch the strip. So especially if you're watching this video and you live in Vegas, take advantage of that. Like make sure you can check out all the deals and say, huh, I actually do have a Nevada state ID. Like I wonder what kind of deals I can get because I'm a local. Number three, the midnight cutoff. Now this one is a bit unfortunate, even borderline like messed up, you know, but that's just the way it is. Now, when it comes to a lot of nightclubs, obviously what do they do? Not only do they advertise the nightclub, but they advertise the DJ with a explosion of electronic music here in the States. Vegas is pretty much now the EDM capital and the DJ capital of the world. So every night they're adver advertising everyone from Stevie Yoki to Diplo to the Chainsmokers to Tiesto. The list goes on and on and on and on. Now, one interesting part of their contract when it comes to these clubs is that if they know they can't make it, like say there's an A-list DJ, a bunch of people are paying money, not even necessarily for the club, but because they want to see that DJ. They, you know, a lot of people now go to Vegas with the mindset, okay, I want to see this DJ and this DJ and this DJ. So let's say that A-list DJ knows they're not going to make it that night. For whatever reason, whether it's transportation troubles, some type of family or personal situation came up, whatever the case is, they cannot announce that they won't be able to make it that night on social media until midnight. That's the midnight cutoff. That at that point, right when it's midnight, they can officially go on Twitter and say, hey guys, I'm really sorry. My airplane broke down or I or I have a personal situation happening. I'm not able to make it tonight. And as you can imagine, this can be very frustrating for a lot of people. If you're like, oh, I can't wait to see, you know, name any A-list DJ tonight. And they know, let's say at 8 a.m. that day that they're not gonna be able to make it. They are legally contracted to not mention anything until midnight. Because as you can imagine, if they said it, say it like, say very earlier in the day, or even if they know the day beforehand, if they say anything, ticket sales drop, right? I mean, if, if you're expecting to see an A-list DJ and they get some type of house DJ, a lot of people are going to be disappointed. So they keep them contracted to, keep, uh, to make sure they don't say anything 
all the way to midnight so they can increase ticket sales. Number four, bars have different prices inside of nightclubs. Now this is actually a traveling hack that I've talked about in other videos, what I call the bar switch. And what I mean is that when you go to a nightclub, there are different bars or basically different sections, I guess for a better word, where you can buy drinks at, right? I mean, you walk into any nightclub in Vegas, there's numerous different places all around the nightclub in that vicinity of that venue that you can buy drinks at. And what you might not know is that some of these drinks decent amount of time can actually be priced differently depending on the location. So for example, and this is not always true, but typically as a good rule of thumb, if let's say there's a bar that's closer to where the action's at, right? Let's say they're right next to the dance floor, the drinks may be a few dollars more than if you get that same exact beer, that same exact drink, that same exact shot, whatever, than if you go to somewhere else in the same venue. There's really no rhyme or reason why. And in addition, the drinks are usually higher priced in a VIP area. So for example, if you like to get v some VIP balcony area, those drinks are usually more overpriced because they assume, well, they're VIP, they don't mind spending more. Now, sometimes one, this is not the case. Sometimes a drink, you know, is gonna be the same in every bar. Sometimes I like to test this for fun because it's kind of interesting, like the economics and the logic and the psychology. But other times I've seen drinks being, you know, a dollar more and you're like, all right, do I really want to go all the way across the venue to save a dollar? Not really worth it. But sometimes I've seen drinks being as close to five or even more than that dollars difference. And I'm like, wait, it's the same venue. It's not like I'm bringing it from the outside in. It's the same location. Yet, for whatever reason, this bar, this section is $5 more for the same drink when I could go upstairs or go around the corner or go somewhere else and get that exact same drink for $5 less. And number five, everything revolves around bottle service. Now, for people in the nightlife and nightclub scene, this is probably common knowledge, but in case you didn't know, what bottle service is, wording it very, very simply, is that basically an area or basically a location in the nightclub that is closed off just for you. So as opposed to you being in the public, so to speak, you know, kind of using that contrast in the public where everyone pushing and shoving you and all these random people interacting with you, you're basically in a private section of the club can, usually it's pretty much out in the open, but it's basically closed off. You usually have some bouncers or employees there. You usually have like a bottle service person there kind of making your drinks for you. Um, in addition, you usually get, as it sounds, bottle service. You're getting bottle upon bottle upon bottle. It is unbelievably expensive. <laughs> uh, that's maybe even a bit of an exaggeration. I mean, you could easily spend tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars in one night for one prime bottle service location. So when it comes to Vegas nightclubs, and this is true actually for any nightclub, but I think especially in Vegas, because the mentality of a lot of people going to Vegas is that they're gonna spend a lot of money, right? High rollers or ballers, whatever term you wanna use, go to Vegas, they, they get bottle service because it's typically not always, but typically guys trying to show off to girls like, hey, I got a table right next to the DJ. I, I'm popping bottles of Grey Goose. And if they're doing that, they probably have an astronomical amount of money. So the way it works, wording it simply, you know, because again, I like to be transparent on all my videos. It's guys who have a lot of money who try to impress girls. That's also typically why as well, clubs like to harp on the ratio rule where they want more girls than guys. Because as you can imagine, if people are paying for bottle service, it sucks to say, but it's the truth. They want to see a lot of girls. They want to see a bunch of girls around them because it makes it seem, at least to them, more worth it to spend all that crazy money to have that bottle there to impress those girls. Finishing this video off with a bonus tip, like I kind of mentioned a little bit earlier in this video, you can get in to almost any Vegas nightclub completely for free, even if it's a group of guys, right? Now, it depends on the night, depends on a bunch of situations, but I will say, I have done a bunch of videos listed below in the description that teach you all the techniques of how to get a club promoter, how to talk to a club promoter, how to work with them, how to figure out the best place to go, and lastly, how you can get into any Vegas nightclub for free.